Hi again and welcome to part 5 of the horror series. In this part you will learn how to pick up keys that unlock doors. For this we use a virtual inventory system. So let's get started. So in the last episode we created this outside part. We're going back to the inside part now. So always remember to save the scenes. And double click on inside to go to inside. If you see nothing, just select something and here in the window hover over your mouse and press the F key. This will focus on the object. So we have doors but we can open them all at the same time. We want some doors to be opened later in the game. So for that we can use keys. And these keys we need to find first. If you take a look at the models folder, you can see I included the key model. So you can use this as a key or you can make your own one. But we're going to leave that for now. The first thing we're going to do is create an empty game object which serves as our inventory. So we call this inventory. Also add a new script to it and call it inventory. Open this one up and let's remove these functions because we don't need them, at least for now. And this will be a public static boolean array. And we call this keys. So what is this now? Well, public we know. That's just that all the scripts can see it. Static means that all the scripts can easily change and access this. But only one bool array with the name keys can exist in the whole game. So remember that. And the boolean array is just a list of booleans. When you put these square brackets behind a type, it will mean that it's an array. So it's a list. And this will contain all our key information. So save this one and open up the door script. And in the door script we're going to make a new public variable. A public integer. And let's call this index. And we default this as minus one. And then we need to change all those indexes for the doors. So for example the door in the hallway will be index zero. Uh, the bathroom will be one. The bedroom will be two. The basement, let's call this one 4 and the closet number 3. So this will mean the player has to first open 0, then 1, then 2, then the 3 and then the 4. It doesn't really matter which one is what index, but it's just easier understandable for us. Then we open up the interact script, it's under the main camera. So let's open it up. And here if we hit the door, we also want to check if we get the key for that specific door. So we need to do something with this index number and we need to do something with this static boolean array. So let me explain this very quick. We got our door on the right side here with the index 2. We also got our array which is a boolean array so it contains all our keys that we found. And at the beginning of the game these all are false because we didn't got any keys. If we got a key we check what door belongs to it. So for example if we found the key which opens door 2 we change the third element. So with index 2 to true. This will say us that we got the key for the door which has the index number 2. So if we hit the door with our raycast, we check if this array returns true if we pass the index number of the door. So step 1 is to fire the raycast, we already did that. Then take the index number, put that in the array and if it returns true, we can open the door. So in our interact script where we hit the raycast, we want to first get the index number and because we need this door script very often we're going to make a variable for that so the type will be door script and the name will be door script with a small letter and this equals this line over here so just copy this one and paste it in here Remember to close it and now we can replace this line with door script with a small letter. Before we do anything else, we're first going to make an if statement and check if this returns null. So if door script is equal to null, then we want to return and return just exit this if statement so we don't get any errors. And because we only have one line in the if statement, we can just 
set it behind this line so we don't have to use this uh, these brackets if you only need one line and then we want to check if the array returns true so make a new if statement and now because this is a static variable we can first say the script name so this will be inventory dot keys and then we use the same square brackets to define the index we want to check and the index will be the door script dot index and if this is equal to true we want to do this door state change and else do nothing this area is now empty so we're going to put something in it and we do that by writing is new boolean array and between these brackets we say 5 because we got 5 doors and now we actually do need the start function so we make this again the void start and here we say keys with index 0 so the first one is true and this means that we can unlock this door without a key so it will always be true so we don't need to have a key for the first door because we want to enter it without the key and save this one and if we now test this we can see that we can open this door but all the other doors we can't check them we can't open them so that's great but now we need to find the keys if you look in the models folder we got our key so drag one into the scene and you can see it's way too big so resize it something like this should be fine so this should be fine for the key then add a new script to it and just let's call it key open this up and the only thing we want to do here is make a new variable which will be a public int and we also call this index and default this as minus one and we do this minus one because then we know we didn't assign a right value to it so we need to do that then back to the interact script here we check what we actually hit we're going to make a new if statement inside this raycast function so just write else if and here we want to check hit dot collider dot compare tag and the tag we're looking for will be key so if we hit something with the tag key and let's first assign this to the key so go to tags add tag and create a new one with key remember to assign it again so if we hit the key with a raycast we want to get the index number of the key then go to the inventory script and add the keys change the boolean of the key we just picked up to true so the same way we did here and how do we do this we go to the inventory script then get to the keys between the square brackets we say hit dot collider dot get component and the component will be key so the key script and from there take the index and then we set that one to true so we look what index the key has and push that to the keys array so that's this one and then change the boolean in there to true also if you have more doors than five just change it here save all your scripts and let's get back to unity let's make a prefab of this key so just drag this object into the prefabs folder and it will create a prefab 
And now you can delete that one. And now we really want to think about how the player will play this game. The player entered this house and he looks around. Maybe he first goes to the TV and look at the table. And then he should try to open one of these doors. But they're all locked at the start of the game. So we can hide the key here at the kitchen. Drag a key into the kitchen over here. And make it visible for the player. You can rotate it as you want. And just place it somewhere over here. Remember that it must be visible for the player, otherwise he can't click on it. Then for this key, we change the index number to the door we want to open with this key. So we can check that by clicking on this door and go to the parent of it. And we can see that this door has index number 1. So this key will also need to have index number 1. And one big thing we forgot is to add a collider, otherwise we can't click on it. So add component. And just take the box collider. Make sure it's the right size. And you can maybe increase the size a bit. So it's easier to click on it. Something like this. Then apply the changes to the prefab. And now let's test it out. Yeah, now we can unlock this door. But these are still locked because we didn't get the key for it. So now we open the bathroom. And here we can hide another key. So go to the prefabs folder and drag another key into the bathroom. I think this bath will be a good <coughs> place to hide our key. Maybe just place it in the middle. Then we change this index number and if we quickly look at the door this will be the bedroom. We can see it's index 2. So for this key we also use index 2. So with, with this key we can open this door and we actually want this door to be opened also at the beginning of a game so we don't need to have any key for it and to do this we check which index it has, it has index number 3. So we go to the inventory, copy this line and make this index 3. So the key with index 3 will be set to true at the beginning of the game. Then the last door will be this basement, which has index 4, and we can hide the key in this closet. So drag the last key into the closet, and position it, something over here, and change the index to 4, because 4 is the basement index. So go to the main camera, and interact distance, let's change this to... 6 for example and maybe change the size a bit so we can click on it more easily and this box glider represents the area where we can click on so something like this should be fine i think so i also got problems with picking up this one so i raised it by placing it on a chair so it's closer to the main camera. You can also increase the interact distance, but I think that's not necessary. So now we can open all these doors, but the keys are not disappearing. And we're just going to delete them after we find them. So in our interact script, after we set the key to true, we're going to delete the object. 
and for this we're going to use destroy and between the brackets we need to say the game object and this one will be the hit dot collider dot game object so now it will destroy the key that we hit let's also quickly make a crosshair and we're going to do that by making a ui element so go to create ui and then text change the alignment to center and this one also middle then here at the text field we say the capital o so it will be a circle you can also use the x or the plus but i really like the the capital o then for the font size we're going to go to the game tab so we can see our crosshair and i think 14 will be fine maybe 15 and the color we change to white you can also change to black but it's not that visible so i'm going to do white or maybe a bit light grayish and you can rename this to crosshair so now we can see where we click you can see that it created a canvas and an event system always leave this as they are because otherwise the ui will not work anymore so now you can easily see where we're clicking If you've got any problems with uh, picking up keys, you can increase the collider size of the keys or go to the first person controller and the main camera and increase the interact distance. This will also help. So now we have unlockable doors and I think this will be it for this episode. In the next episode, we will add some noises, music and background effects so it will be much more scary ambience. We're also going to make a main menu but that will be a later episode and many more things to make this game scary. As always, the project file is in the video description so you can download it. All the assets are free to use so you can just create your own game. If you made something nice, please let me know. I'll take a look at it. Also, if you've got any questions, feedback or just want to say something, please let me know in the comments down below. Remember to subscribe to this channel if you don't want to miss any upcoming tutorials. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next part.